just after I became a freelance writer, full-time freelance writer in the 1990s, I interviewed the head of Microsoft here in the UK. And as well as learning that there may never be a more arrogant man in the history of time, I also learned that even back then, the 1990s, Microsoft had spent over a billion dollars creating Microsoft Word. Actually, I also remember that he boasted about the how much engineering brilliance he personally had put into that thing where, you know, a word recovers your lost documents. I believe the last thing I got to ask, the last question before I was escorted out of the building was, could they not have spent maybe a little bit less on recovering documents and a little bit more on not losing them in the f first place? Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word was not made by writers. And I think Apple's Pages was, I think. Whether you use Pages because you like it or because, you know, quite reasonably, really, it's free and it's on your Mac already where Word is a subscription cost, there is one thing. Every publisher, every editor, every producer, really, they use Microsoft Word and no publisher, no editor is going to convert your documents from Pages into their format. It's on you and me. It's on the writer. It's always on us to deliver in Word format, regardless of what format we choose to write in. Now, fortunately... It is very easy to handle Word formatted documents in pages, not least, maybe a bit least, because there has just been a tiny update to help more with it. Here's what you have to remember to do. Actually, before I forget, because it's so small, I'll forget it. That little update, it's really little. It's to do with charts. If your publisher sent you back a Word document and it had a chart in it, then you opened it in pages, it would grow a border around it, apparently, except it doesn't anymore. Fixed. Told you it was tiny. But it's Apple constantly working to make it more smooth, easier, more invisible, right, to move between pages and Word. Anyway, hello, I'm William Gallagher, and this is 58 Keys, which, as ever, as always, is for writers like you and me, who use and who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads. I do subscribe or support 58 Keys on Patreon, because there's always so much to talk about, although possibly never as much as when you start talking about Microsoft Word. Back in the day, okay, I used to relish a document called Bend Word to Your Will. I believe there was a gigantic version for the PC, but I just went hunting for it again, and the edition I can find for the Mac is 85,000 words or so. And actually, neither the Mac nor the PC bits I can see have been updated in 10 years. And that, that tickles me, because I think it was probably about 11 years ago that I suddenly realised, why am I reading so much about how to make Microsoft Word work when I could just open pages and get on with writing. But first, the easy bit. In pages, with your document open, choose the file menu, then export to, and then Word. You end up at this. Ignore everything except that save button. Don't click require password to open because that's just adding another barrier to your publisher being able to open the document without swearing your name. And also, do not choose send a copy. I mean, you could, it's right there, of course you could. But if you do, oh, actually, let's have a look. If you choose send a copy, you see that it has options to email the document to someone or message them and things like that. So you could choose mail and then pages would start a new email that includes the converted Word document as an attachment, which has got to seem nicely quick and efficient. But for your sanity, really, because publishers are going to be coming back to you and you need to be certain which version is which, which did you send them, which draft is which, don't do it that way. Instead, choose boring old save and have one place, one folder where these word versions of your document go. I have one called TX. TX is short for transmission and any document that I'm sending out to anyone, I save in there in word format and then I'll email it to them from there. I'll message it to them from there, whatever I need, knowing all the time that the latest word version is safe right there in this TX folder, which also means that I can quickly resend it if they need me to for any reason. Yeah, and I can open it to compare what I sent against anything they send back to me. Definitely do that with any contracts going back and forth. Okay, any contract. Um, it's important, I think, to keep the Word document separate from your page's original for, for all these reasons of, of comparing, of, of document management, that's the phrase I'm thinking of, so that you know what's the latest version in which format. But this is important to us, I think, as writers. The best version of your document is always the one that is in 
whichever word processor you actually wrote it in. So if you start it in pages, try to always write it in pages, even if you and your publisher go back and forth and back and forth with word versions. And then with two exceptions and potentially one big problem, keep your documents simple. Usually these days, the text you write is going to end up in someone else's system. They're typically a content management system. And actually, very little formatting is going to survive. It'll be the text and that's all. I regularly use one publisher's content management system, CMS, that, that actually it even bulks at accented characters and curly speech marks have been known to break it. It's never going to handle multi-column layouts with, I don't know, flashing colours or embedded videos and things like that. So unless you know your publisher and you have specifically agreed in advance to send them images, videos, anything, just don't. Straight, simple text is best. Actually, really, images should be sent separately. Word processes are not a good place for images, or at least not for a lot of large images, no matter what they claim. Um, and even in text, though, you can have complex documents. If you must have a more complex document than solely straight text, so page breaks, section breaks, they're probably fine. Pages has section breaks. It has page breaks, and they are translated over to words equivalent almost always correctly. Yeah, almost always. Okay, it's very, very close. Pages also has styles, though, and if you, if you do use styles, well, then those styles will practically every time be transferred invisibly over into the Word document. I mean, transparent, it'll just work. If you don't already use style, well then use styles, okay? Because even when you're not sending out Word versions of your document, pages styles are your friend. Microsoft Word styles are your friend. Because with styles and with a tiny bit of effort, you can tell pages that you want all chapter titles to be Helvetica, 14 point, bold and italic, where your main text, your body text is 12.9 times Roman or something, which is very nice for you and me as writers, but it's practically mental health care if it's your publisher who comes back and says no. They now want every paragraph an 11 point Futura, bold, range left and right, or whatever. Once you take that time to set up styles, you can change them to that nonsense quickly and more usefully. You can also switch while you're writing, you can switch very quickly between chapter title and body copy just so rapidly. So start, styles are actually great whether you convert into Word or not. And they are great when you do convert into Word because there's little to worry about with styles, with page breaks, with section breaks, anything. There is also track changes though. In my experience, however, that's not something I tend to use much in my writing, not the initial drafts. It's more a tool when other people send me back a document. So actually, let's do that all together. Let's deal with what happens when you get a Word document sent back to you. This will always happen. It's inescapable. You get your Word document sent back to your own publisher. You open up in Pages and Pages says, this Word document may look different. It'll then give you a list. And well, actually, the one you see there in the example, that's quite serious. Normally, it's just a list of fonts you haven't gotten and the publisher does. Nothing you can do about that, or at least nothing you should be bothered about doing about. So you just close the may look different box. I wish there were a setting where I could tell pages to not bother showing me this stuff unless I ask for it, because in my situation, it's never any use. I'm actually, they're rather surprised by that example, which says footnotes are removed. That's serious, but I'm still going to say, don't worry about it because that document, that example, that's the 85,000 word bend word to your will document. And it is laden with Microsoft Word trickery. I think my Mac just swore about it. It looks to me like it's a special type of footnote no earthly writer had ever heard of. And yeah, that's what's being ignored. Plus, this is you and me opening someone else's Word document. I mean, in that example, it's not the same as when it's us opening our own document that a publisher has sent back to us. Publishers aren't going to put in footnotes. We are. And actually, there is an issue you need to know about footnotes, but it isn't this one. So for now, you get back a Word formatted document from your publisher. The page says, this might look different, and you shrug. What's far, by far the most likely difference that's going to be significant is the track changes bit. If you haven't used track changes in your life before, then there's no reason you'd even know what they are. And actually, if you write by yourself for yourself, you may never need to know what it means either. But 
It is a useful feature, and somehow publishers who won't ever convert formats, they've glommed onto this one, and they like this one. Whether it's you or they, though, you can get a manuscript and then turn on track changes. In Pages, it's the edit menu, and then just track changes. And from that moment on, until you give up and go home, everything you do is tracked. If you delete some text, the text you deleted, well, it stays right there in the document, but it's struck through. If you write some new text, well, then that new text goes into the document, but it goes in a different color. The idea is that you can instantly see any changes, all changes that have been made, whether they're deletions, additions, the smallest thing, the biggest thing, everything. And when you've seen those changes, you can choose to accept them or reject them. If this is useful to you, it's really useful. Yeah, and if it isn't, you'll never need to think of it again. But what happens so commonly is you'll write a manuscript in pages, you'll export it in Word format, you'll send it off, and then the publisher or the editor will send you back a Word document that has a lot of these tracked changes in it. Their comments, their notes, their questions. Apple's pages gets it, gets tracked changes. It will just open that Word document and everything will be as it should. Every deletion struck through, every addition in a new colour, and then the big accept and reject buttons. I actually think that's marvellous of pages. Um, I was going to say I've used track changes countless times, but I could probably count it, actually, because I only ever use it when I was a particular editor who really likes it, an editor publisher. I could work out how many times I've done it for her. But whenever a publisher does it, though, everything works. And I know, actually, it was 20 times. The last run I did for her, that publisher, was 20 documents in a row. And I know that all the way through, she had no idea and no need to have any idea that I wasn't writing everything in Word every single minute. Yeah, but then at no point was I writing footnotes. And that is a thing to watch out for. Pages can include footnotes, of course. Word can include footnotes. It all works fine. Only when your publisher opens a Word document, Word automatically uses a template, and I really don't know why. If you're writing something new, I get it then, the blank template, and I, yeah, even then I don't see why it was have to be a template, there's nothing in it, but okay. When you open a document though, Word invisibly in the background opens a template, and it's a template that has margins set, and those margins can be different to yours, which means the page might be shorter or longer, it means it is, I've seen this, it's possible to have the page turn out to be so long that there's no room for footnotes. And there doesn't appear to be a guaranteed way to stop that or even to spot it at the risk of it happening. What you could do is export the page's document in Word format on your Mac and then do this. Go to the Finder, click to select it, tap the space bar. The Mac's a built-in quick look will open it up as a preview, which will be pretty close to how Microsoft Word will show it. And it should show you, should show you any footnote problem, but it may not. The expensive way is to be or buy Microsoft Word. I suppose actually you could download the free LibreOffice for Mac, which is intentionally very similar to Word. I'm not going to say knockoff at all. I don't know why you thought that, but it's even that's not a guarantee. It will look the same. What I do, a bit of heavy handed approaches. I don't write footnotes at all. Might not be the answer for you. I do think all of this sounds like quite a lot of trouble to go to just to avoid buying or writing in Microsoft. Well, it's worth it. Yeah. I'm not saying that Pages is fantastic and that everyone should use Pages, but I do like it. And actually, everything you've heard now applies whether you're using Pages or any other word, any other word processor other than Microsoft Word. I've actually hit more problems when I've received what were purportedly Word documents. So someone else was trying to do this export thing and they were using uh, LibreOffice or OpenOffice. Again, even whichever way around it is, it's always on the writer to save in the right formats for sending to other people, which might be unfair. But at least when it's you and me having to do it, you know you'll do it, you know it will be done. And in this case, the writer sent me .odt files. Didn't. It was a pain. Also, I've done this 58 keys, this whole episode about how sending pages, documents in Word forms, because I was asked about it. Despite what you've just heard, how much of it was, this, I, I felt actually originally there was so little to it that I shouldn't spend a whole 58 Keys episode on the topic. But that's really because once you've done it a few times, it becomes practically automatic. Even that exports to Word thing, I have a keystroke set up to speed it up. It's true of anything, isn't it? Once you know how something to do, anything, you know how to do it. But once you know how to export in Word and do all this stuff, you can carry on concentrating on the bit that no one else can do, which is your writing. 
And that's why we do this, isn't it? All of it, it's why we do it. Quick story. I said I interviewed the head of Microsoft UK. It would have been in the 1990s. I can't remember quite when. It was a miserable day, I'll tell you. And afterwards, I'm standing at the local train station. I've just missed one train. It's going to be an hour. It might have been an hour and a half before the next one. And it was cold. And I'm thinking, this is not a lot of fun. Being a freelance writer is not great. And then the BBC phoned me up and offered me a week's work. I've never looked back. Didn't mean to tell you that. Actually, but, sorry, but thanks for putting it back in my head. It's a nice memory after the Microsoft memories. Anyway, now, that's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Now, take care of yourself. Write more in any format you like. And I'll see you soon.